The law of attraction is no secret, and it is about much more than surrounding yourself with people who practice it. Michael Lozier teaches seminars and teleclasses on the law of attraction. He uses it to run his life and believes if you want to get more of what you want and less of what you don't want, you need to understand the science behind this metaphysical principle. Lozier is a trainer, a neurolinguistics programming practitioner, and a best-selling author. It is my pleasure to welcome Michael Lozier back to Studio 4 to tell us more. We've attracted you again. I, I've attracted you again. I know, we, mo we must be putting out the same vibes, yes. or does that matter? Well, it does matter. It's called vibrational harmony. It means our vibrations are harmonious, and you know, you can tell by how we feel with each other, because I know that sometimes we're around people where it doesn't feel good, but we still make ourselves do it. But we're, you and I are pretty selfish that way. We only <laughs> like to do things that feel good, and selfish for me means self-care. We like to care about ourselves enough to only be in relationships that make us feel good, and that's what we have. When did you decide you wanted to be a practitioner of the law of attraction? In 1996, on the way home from Seattle, on the ferry to Victoria, where I live. And that's when I knew, because, you know, like most people, I always understood about attracting good things, right? I said, oh, I'd brag about it, oh, I attracted this, I attracted that. But you know what I didn't understand is well, how could I possibly attract negative things? How could somebody kind, loving, and caring attract negative things? And that's when I learned in Seattle more about law of attraction and how it's obedient. And it has one job, and it's to match the vibes that we're sending, whether negative or positive. Matter of fact, it explained to me why positive people attract negative things. Why do we attract something we don't want? Okay, first, to understand that law of attraction, it really could be called the law of vibrations. And even though we might not use the word vibration in everyday language, we do use the shorter condensed word vibe. We mm -hmm. might say, wow, the vibe's ever good in here. Or, She's given off a negative vibe. You see, a vibe isn't something that we smell or taste or touch or hear. A vibe is something that we feel. We could stand beside somebody and pick up their negative vibes. Well, law of attraction, which is this universal energy around you, is checking right now to find out what your vibes are. And when it finds it, it matches it, whether it's negative or positive. Why do you call it a science? Well, it's a science because it's duplicatable. It's a, there's a recipe, there's a formula that makes it happen. You know, there's other authors that talk about the molecules and metaphysics and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in that. You know, the other thing about law of attraction is that I can't prove it to anybody. I can't put it in a test tube or a Petri dish and pass it around the room and say, here's law of attraction, do you believe me now? <laughs> but what I can do is teach people tools and techniques so they can tap into it and then prove it themselves. If you believe in it, it gives you some power to deal with it, yes. I assume. For instance, if you attract something you don't want in your life yes. and you t take accountability for that, say, well, I must have put out that vibe because yes. here it is, yes. the elephant in the room, Yes. but I know how to work with it. That's right. And I love that you use the word accountability. Here's what accountability means, my ability to account for why I'm attracting it. Because when something great shows up, we'll point at it and say, that's there because of me, my vibes brought that here. <laughs> but we need to be able to say that when it's negative. We need to point at it and say, that's here because of me, my vibes brought that here. So in other words, we have the ability to account for why we attract anything. And just like a reset button on any piece of machinery, mm -hmm. if there's an area in your lives that you don't like, you can reset it. The results that we get are always a reflection or the results from the vibes that we're sending. If you don't like what you're getting, reset it. And the way you reset your results is to reset your vibrations. That's why it's important to understand that law of attraction exists. Whether you like it or not, or believe it or not, or even whether you understand it or not, mm -hmm. everything you're attracting is a result of the vibes that we're sending. How do you reset? Well, here's how you do it. The, 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 the cause of all vibrations is thoughts and words. And there's three words in our vocabulary that when we use them, it causes us to send a negative vibration. And as we send the negative vibration, the obedient law of attraction is checking and checking and checking, and now starts to unfold and orchestrate to bring us more of what we said we didn't want. Now, ideally, these words would be foreign and French, and nobody would use them. <laughs> but most people use them 150 times before noon. And the words are, don't, not, and no. Because every time I talk about what I don't want, I just gave it attention. It's like going to the internet and typing in no football. If you type in no football, you get football. 
If you can imagine, law of attraction is like a vibrational internet. And when I'm complaining about what I don't want, and when I'm talking about what I don't want, I just gave it attention. And as I give anything attention, law of attraction will unfold and orchestrate it. And then we catch ourselves pointing at something and saying, that's exactly what I didn't want. I've been saying all week I didn't want that. Mm. And if law of attraction had a voice, would say, my job isn't to decide whether it's good or bad for you, or whether you want it or don't want it. My job is to match. Law of attraction is a matcher of vibrations, whether negative or positive. Well, the very fact you want something means you don't have it. That's right. Now, people would say not to use the word want. Is that where you're going? It's like, mm -hmm. well, don't say the word want, but we're going to do a little exercise. I want you to be my vibrational meter reader, and I want you to tell me what my vibrations are when I say, I want one of those. Is that a negative or positive vibration? That's negative. How about this one? Ooh, I want one of those. Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So it's not the word you use, it's how you feel about the mm -hmm. word that you use. So it's okay to desire and to want, providing you come from that place of uh, the positive vibration. It's okay to desire and say, ooh, I want one of those, I want one of those. So you're appreciating it and you're feeling it. So yes. that means, Mr. Lozier, that you have to connect how you feel to your words. You have to feel the feeling. Yes. Well, feeling the feeling, that might be kind of foreign to people, particularly Probably. people that say they don't have foreign. But if I'm spending time, say we go for lunch and I'm talking to you about something I desire, if I'm excited about that, that's causing me to send the feeling. I don't have to sit there and say, oh, I'm trying to get the feeling. Just my enthusiasm <laughs> about the desire causes me to send the positive vibration. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to be said for daydreaming and pretending and visualizing and making macaroni collages and telling 10 friends about something you want because it causes you to send the vibration of the way you want it to be. And law of attraction doesn't know why you're sending the vibration. It's busy unfolding and orchestrating to give you more of what you said you wanted or didn't mm -hmm. want. As you have watched Barack Obama uh, come through the process, uh, yes. the, the Democratic uh, nomination, a man who started with 20%, a man who will likely be, unless well, something drastic happens, the uh, uh, candidate for the Democrats yes. in the United States, now that'll his be vibration, yes. you see, he's like a rock star. Yes. Well, I think, you know, the, the, the United States is ready for a big reset button. Mm -hmm. The whole vibration of the country will change when the leader changes, and the leader is the one that sets the intention of the vibration. We will see a major change in vibration around the planet. Mm -hmm. Now, there will be some negative, ne negative vibrations, but what we don't hear about is how positive things are. We only hear about the negative things. This is going to be very good for the United States to have different energy there. You see, I think attention right attention increases vibration yes. you're the expert is that true what i pay attention to yes. increases the vibration negative or positive Neg that's the key negative or positive so you know i could be talking about what i don't want and law of attraction mm -hmm. eavesdropping on the vibration when i'm complaining and law of attraction isn't very smart but it is very obedient and it'll unfold and orchestrate to match the vibration that i'm sending that's why we need to be more deliberate about the words and the thoughts that we're using and saying what happens when you want something badly and you get it and then you sabotage it? Yes. Well, I think that has a lot to do with people's self-worth or not understanding really what it is mm -hmm. that they want. You know, self-sabotage to me means self-negative talk, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I don't, I, I don't deserve that. So they actually vibe themselves out of having it. They talk themselves out of it, which creates the vibe of not having it. Oh, it means mm -hmm. you feel in your soul or your heart you don't deserve it. Yes, or you don't know how to manage when, you know, I hear people always wanting to have a million dollars. You know that most people wouldn't know what to do if they won the lottery? Like, they, they wouldn't know how to I'd say, oh, yes, I would. And i say, tell me right now, what would you buy? And, mm -hmm. you know, n now they're buying, like, you know, fax machines for their bathroom. I mean, they're just running out of things to buy. They <laughs> wouldn't know how to manage the money. And maybe you wouldn't buy anything. Maybe you'd give it away. It's true. You don't know. Yes. We all think about it. But when you think about winning the lotto, yes. uh, when I think about winning the lotto, I don't know what you think, but I know what I do with it. I do. I'm not going to broadcast it, but yes. I, I have a fairly clear idea at first. I don't know how I deal with the people that suddenly liked me because I won the lotto. Yeah. That's a challenge. Uh, speed at which this law of attraction uh, manifests. Yeah. How uh, do you speed it up? How do you slow it down if you want to slow it down? Okay. Now, you know, people think, 
Uh, the only thing they have to do is think about what they want or talk about what they don't want or build a list. Well, if it was that mm -hmm. easy, we'd have everything we ever built a list for. The speed at which law of attraction will bring to you what you give attention, energy, and focus to is always determined on how much doubt you have in receiving it. So for example, I have a strong desire. So on a scale of 1 to 10, let's give me a plus 10. Boy, I have really strong desire. That's a plus 10. But then there's a voice in my head that says, well, you can't have that. You don't deserve that. Well, that's the voice of doubt. Mm -hmm. If I had really strong doubt, that would be a minus 10. You see, the minus 10 of my doubt has now canceled out the positive 10 of my desire. So we don't need to desire more, we need to doubt less. So the speed at which we'll attract anything is determined in how much doubt we have in receiving it. So absence of doubt will bring desire faster. That's right. In the law of attraction. That's right. And you know, we've had lots of examples about that. Maybe, for example, some people are starting to put on their you know, summer clothes and they reach in their pocket and they pick out a business card of somebody they haven't talked to in three months and, they, and they're giving them attention, energy, and focus. And guess what? Two hours later, that person calls and we said, wow, I was just thinking about you. This is such a coincidence. You see, every time we use the word coincidence and serendipity and synchronicity, we're always mm -hmm. experiencing evidence of law of attraction. Out of the blue. Yes. Luck. So it means you didn't have any doubt in receiving that person's call. That's why it happened really fast. So when you make a list, and you do in the law of attraction, whoops, you do in the law, <laughs> I attracted that, obviously. You do in the law of attraction, uh, you call it clarity through contrast. Yes. Tell me what that's about. Well, contrast is anything that doesn't feel good, so it's a negative vibration. So if I'm, you know, people say, I wonder what my vibes I'm sending. Well, if you're curious mm -hmm. and you want to know what the vibrations are that you're sending in any area of your life, go to that area and take a look and see what you're getting. It's a perfect match. So you need to, I get people, you have to write it down. You have to say, here's what I'm telling myself about my career or attracting a boyfriend or girlfriend or my money situation. And when you write down all the negative stuff that you're attracting, you mm -hmm. stand back and look at the list and you'll say, no wonder I'm attracting what I'm attracting. You see, law of attraction can't buck that current. It can only match it. So we need to reset our words, which resets the vibration. So this clarity through contrast list in my book says, build a list of all the things you don't like and then move it to the other side of the page to say what you do like. And here's what happens. When I go from what I don't want to what I do want, the words change. And when the words change, the vibration changes. So now I'm sending a new vibration and law of attraction is checking, checking, checking on my new vibration. And the best news of all, it doesn't remember what the vibration used to be. It's not keeping score and it doesn't have a file folder in all of our vibrations. Mm -hmm. It only knows the vibration we're sending right now. And you can do this in your little cozy bed at night. There That's are right. two columns. That's right. A list of what you don't want, convert it to what you do want, and then cross off the list about what you don't want. And now you have a list about what you do want. And now as you're giving attention to what you do want, now you're sending that vibration. And that's when people need to start paying attention to mm -hmm. everything that they're receiving that's in alignment to their list. Well, we really measure success, I think we measure success, by our level of understanding who we really are. Yes, good point. Uh, fame does not make you successful, it makes you famous. Yes. Uh, unlimited wealth does not make you successful, it makes you, it makes you rich. Yes. But it doesn't mean you're happy, we know that. Yes. It's not too complicated, well, but yet again it is. Yes, I agree with that. People think, you know, the, the purpose in life is to have money and to have riches and jewels. And for me, the purpose in life is to feel good. And what we should be doing is finding strategies that make us feel good. So I know what makes me feel good is, is speaking and lecturing and training and teaching and, and teaching people this powerful force so they can enjoy it. That's where I get my mm -hmm. joy. And when I'm experiencing joy, I don't need to have all the other material things. You know what? I rent a house and I don't have a car. I'm not material at all. I'll, I feel good by traveling and teaching and lecturing and having my own radio show and, and so on and just being in service mm -hmm. to help people with law of attraction. Your own radio fro. fro. Your fro? My fro. Your fro? Your radio fro? On Oprah and Friends. Yes. I XM156. Have, yes, I have my own law of attraction radio show on XM156 and I'm one of the nine hosts that Oprah has on her show and I'm the law of attraction expert and I go to Chicago once a month and I record the four shows and they've just set a studio up in my home in Victoria so I'll be doing my shows from Victoria now but they've been 
training and grooming me for mm -hmm. the last six months. So we have a really awesome show. Does Oprah play a part in this, or is it Oprah's producers and Oprah's people? Well, it was Oprah that went to the, because Oprah interviewed me four times in her radio mm -hmm. show, The Soul Series. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I was the most interviewed guest ever on her radio show. And she went to the producer and say, get him on the air. He needs to have his own show. And uh, that's how that happened. So do you think Oprah practices the law of attraction? Absolutely. Absolutely, she practices the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. You know, the law of attraction is existing whether we do it on purpose or not, right? People say, oh, the law of attraction worked for me yesterday. It's like, oh, no, it's working for you right now and right mm -hmm. now. But that's what's called deliberate attraction, is when we deliberately tap into the law of attraction by doing something deliberate, which is eliminating the words don't, mm -hmm. not, and no, for example. Yes. You know, I had to work very hard on myself not to try to figure things out intellectually. Yes. When uh, I, I talk to someone like yourself, law of attraction, neurolinguistic programmer, a metaphysician, a shaman, it's difficult for me to step back and not analyze it. Yes. Yeah. So you're a figure or outer. Unfortunately. Yes. And I'm a monkey brain. Yes. Well, one of the things about law of attraction is that people decide what they want. This, that's the first mm -hmm. step. What do you want? They give it attention, which is the second step. And then they try to figure out where it's going to come from. Well, that's not your job. You see, your job is to identify what you want and offer or set the energy in motion of the desire. It's like going to the internet. You don't go to a search engine and tell the search engine where to find the document that you're looking for. You let the internet come back with lots of choices. Mm -hmm. So if we can think of the universe or law of attraction as a vibrational internet. So here's what I'd like, let law of attraction figure it out. And in my book, that's one of the tools I say, if you catch yourself trying to figure out where it's going to come from, just say, let law of attraction figure it out. You can almost feel the relief. It's like, that's not my job. Let God do it. Let the universe do it. Uh, do you believe that the universe or God doesn't deliver anything to you you can't handle? No, that's, I don't believe that at all. You see, law of attraction, people said, oh, the universe is testing me. Well, the universe isn't testing anybody. It's busy matching your vibrations. Or sometimes people will say, hey, this is the second time I saw that person. I must be meant to date them. Or this is the third time or the fourth time. Well, the reason why they're showing up the second and third and fourth time is because you gave them attention the first and second and third time. Mm -hmm. Law of Attraction doesn't bring you things to test you or to help you on your path. It brings things that match your vibration. So if you are uh, attracting the same thing over and over and over again, yes. uh, a, a difficult mate, uh, a job you don't like, clients a dog you don't like, clients yes. to drive you crazy, yes. you are the creator of that That's in your right. opinion. And the only way to attract something different is to send a different vibration. And that's where the reset button comes in. So if you don't like what you see in your observation of the things that you don't like, it causes you to send the matching vibration. Mm -hmm. So as I'm paying attention to something I don't like, I'm sending the matching vibration. Law of attraction unfolds and brings me more of what I said I didn't want. So what, what do you do with fear in your life? Uh, fear of a, a health problem, fear of death, big fears, fear of death, for instance. How do you work with it in your life? Well, I don't really experience any of those things, you know. And if I do feel fearful, it's fear, fear is always something based on the future. It's like, you've heard the acronym false evidence appearing real. So when I'm fearful of something, it's something that hasn't even created yet. So I'm good at changing my mind about that. It's like, oh, I'm worried about this, or I'm feeling fearful. It's like, you know what? Everything I'm going to need, know, or have is going to unfold. It's going to be a great interview, or it's going to be a great seminar. And Okay, for, sirrah, sirrah. Yeah, so for example, um, in Vancouver this week, because I have 100 people coming from all over the world, from eight countries, to do my certified law of attraction training program. And once in a while, I think, wow, what a responsibility I have. And I might get into the little fearful place, and then I say, mm -hmm. you know what? I am the right, perfect person for this. And they, So I'm good at reframing things, mm -hmm. which causes me to feel better about that. So sure. So that's how you manage the fear. If I have the butterflies about something, if I'm giving a speech, I have the butterflies. I try to uh, pretend I'm Diane Sawyer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I don't know if it works, but I think, now, would Diane Sawyer be in a yeah. flap about this? No. Yeah. And she probably would be. Right. But what it did, th what that little exercise did for you, it took your focus off the fear. Uh -huh. And another little example is I teach people to say something, oh, you know, right now I'm safe. Right now, everything's safe. And, and what mm -hmm. that does, it takes me out of this, this fear channel I was down and puts me into another channel. Is all it is is the reshifting of your thoughts, which reshifts the vibration. I have a friend, a very smart friend, who has had more health challenges than most, and she always says to me, I enjoy good health. Well, 
You do? Yeah. But well, then good. Yeah, when it's good. But it's not true. Because if she's sick, she's not enjoying good health. What I would teach people to say is, I'm in the process of becoming more healthy. And that's a true statement. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why affirmations don't work for many people, because they're trained to tell themselves something that isn't true. I remember, you know, I'm, I'm a big guy now, but in the early 1990s, I was much heavier, probably like 60 pounds heavier. And I remember having a bath, um, an affirmation in my bathroom mirror that said, I have a happy, slender body. Well, guess what? When you're like over 300 pounds, standing in the bathroom mirror, saying you have a happy, slender body, a little voice says, well, that's not true. You are not. You're so big, you can't even see your feet. But here's what's important. Law of attraction isn't responding to the mm -hmm. words. It's responding to how I feel about the words. And that's why affirmations don't work. Matter of fact, a positive affirmation can have a negative vibration. So you would say, when you look in the mirror and you're 300 pounds... Yeah. Well, I'm in the process of attracting whatever I need to do know, or have to have a happier, slender body. And as soon as I say that, here's the little key, as soon as I said that, I just set the energy in motion because law of attraction is responding to it. And then the sentence becomes true, and it's like, I am in the process of attracting whatever I need to do, know, mm -hmm. or have. It lets you off the hook a bit, really, when you say, I'm in the process. Yes. I don't mean you're procrastinating. I am in the process. I intend. Yes. I am going there. I know, but what about, I know I can get there. That, that'd be okay, I see too. it. Now, I know the affirmation police, if they're listening, would mm. say never state that you're in the process. State it as if you have it. But if you state as if you have it and you don't, that causes a negative thought. But the word process is very important here because if I, if I jot down on a little piece of paper of something I desire, in that very moment, I just set the energy in motion so it's in process. Mm -hmm. And if I tell you over lunch something I'd like to attract, I just set the energy in motion. So it's all about it is in the process. Matter of fact, just by talking about it sets the energy in motion. So then that sentence becomes true. And if it's true for me, now I'm sending a positive vibration. Okay, so do you edit your... People pod. Do we have to take a break, Sue? Okay, we have to take a break. Okay. When we come back, we'll talk about uh, editing what I call the people pod. The people around you who are dreary and dark and low vibes. Mm -hmm. How do you get rid of them? Okay, very After good. After this with Michael Lozier, Law of Attraction. Michael Lozier is visiting Studio 4. He is a neurolinguistic programming practitioner, a trainer and best-selling author, a radio host. His small book is called Law of Attraction. I say small, but lots of stuff in it. Yes. Uh, the people pod, the people we surround ourselves with yes. uh, in our personal lives and at work. Yes. How do you dump someone at work that's dreary? Well, here's the deal. You know, if you can imagine our vibrations go on a scale to zero and 100, if we have a low vibration around 30 or 40, mm -hmm. based on the rule of law of attraction, you'll attract other people in 30 and 40. So ideally, we will do things to keep our vibration high. And when your vibration's high, you attract people with the same matching vibration. And that's why some people, as they do their personal growth or they, they learn and develop more, they're raising their dial. It's like a radio dial. They're raising their dial, but their friends haven't. Their mm -hmm. friends are still back on 30 and 40, and that's why they feel a little bit resistant to them. Now, when it comes to having negative people around you, negative people are always talking about what they don't want. And as the other person listening to the conversation, we're always at choice about whether we buy into it, which makes us lower our dial to match theirs, or do we lock in our vibration and say, you know what, I'm gonna keep asking you, what, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? And when I do that, it makes them go from what they don't want to what they do want. So they inevitably raise their vibration to match yours. And what happens when you lock your vibration in at a high vibration, that's by being very selfish again, which is self-care, about everything that you include in your life, you stop attracting negative things because the rules in place, the rule of law of attraction, which says you'll only match and attract people that match your vibration. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, well, what if it's my husband or wife that's negative? <laughs> or what if it's somebody at work? The yes. same rule applies. If they're having a negative conversation, you can buy into it or you could say, so what would you like? What would you like? Two mm -hmm. things will happen. You'll annoy them so much they'll stop talking to you. Or you'll have trained them how to treat you. Because people mm -hmm. will treat you the way you allow them to. 
So you need to say, you know what, if you want to be negative, you'll need to call somebody else. If you want to be positive, then you need to, then, then I'll take your call or you know, we'll, ha we'll have that kind of relationship. How can we make it happen? That's right, by, by saying, so if you're talking to somebody negative and you say, so that you don't like that, what do you want? And you don't like that, what do you mm -hmm. want? In other words, you keep resetting and resetting. And what happens when they start to talk about what they want, then their vibration matches. And then eventually people will say, you're the most uplifting person in my life. Mm -hmm. And that's literal. What they mean is you've literally helped uplift their lower vibration to a higher vibration. What that also means is that you have locked in your vibration, and if people want to be in your energy, they need to raise their dial to meet yours. So to take the litmus test, look at your friends. Who are your friends? That's right. Uh, where are they? That's right. Uh, when they walk into the room, are you excited, delighted, Yes. happy to be with them, happy to share wine with them? Happy, we know, the energy sucking yeah. Or you, you look at the call display, when somebody calls you say, oh, they bring me down. You know what we say, you know what we mean when we say they bring me down? I'm going to lower my vibration, I'm going to lower my dial to match theirs. And we don't like, that's where that resistance comes from. Mm -hmm. The negative vibration comes from when we feel ourselves having to lower our dial. But you can manage that. Again, negative people are always talking about what they don't want, and you can manage that conversation. You can support them by saying, mm -hmm. so what do you want? And you'll feel the difference. Right, but with call display, you just don't have to pick up. I know, but then they'll that just keep calling and calling. may sound selfish, yes. <laughs> but it's self-care. You think, no. Well, you wouldn't go to a it's buffet her. and eat food Not you didn't like the up. taste of. And you wouldn't make a CD and put songs you didn't like the sound of. Mm -hmm. So, see, in those areas, we're pretty selfish. But we need to be selfish in all the areas, including relationships. Exactly. And that means gratitude, does it not? When you wake up on a gray day like we did this morning, it's not completely gray, but it's June. Yeah. It's not bright and sunny. Yes. It's only the weather. It's mm -hmm. only water. Right? So you just have to reframe everything. It's like, oh, it's raining. It's only water. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, it makes a bad day. No, it doesn't make a bad day. It's just water, and, and I'm joking about that a little bit, but we right. just need to reframe it. But, but you don't lie to yourself and say, I love gray days. I, no. Well, my friend, my little happy friend, said <laughs> yesterday, friend. well, you know what? As long as it's gray, it might as well be raining because it's good for the gardens. Yeah, so that's what, in NLP, we call that reframing. In other words, it's always a different way to see something. It's always, you know, I can look at it from over this mm -hmm. angle or this angle. Of but course, so you say it's gray and it's raining and I can't walk the seawall. Yes, you can. Get an umbrella. Yes, it's true. Now, uh, the, the, no, the notion here that you're talking about, um, oh, I've lost my train of thought. Not a good thing. I know, thing. I said my little happy friend. Yes. My little happy friend, when she wakes up and it's raining, she says something Before like... Before that... Uh, no, you're making me go back. Reframing, how to reframe. About having a negative day, about resetting vibrations. Mm -hmm. Uh, saying something you don't believe, maybe? Yeah, saying like something. Like if you wake up and say, I love the rain, but you don't love the rain? That's right. That's yeah. not good. No. I don't think we should lie to ourselves. I don't think so either. Oh, we were talking about gratitude and feeling exactly. grateful. Exactly. So here's what's important. You know, people, people want a first aid kit to feel better, right? Well, there is something in your first aid kit, and it's called uh, appreciation. You see, remember I was talking about the scale of vibrations from 0 to 100? Mm -hmm. You know where appreciation sits on that dial? 100. Appreciation and gratitude are the highest forms of vibration. So if you're feeling negative and you want to go to your first aid kit and find something to pop, you know, it's like, well, how am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. Then find something to appreciate. You know, I live in Victoria. It's really easy to stand on my balcony and say, oh, I just love living here. I'm so appreciative of this and this. And then I'm, now I'm focusing on stuff that I appreciate. And now I've changed my vibration. You see, you can only have one thought at a time. So when I go from a low negative thought to a positive appreciative thought, Matter of fact, in my book, I talk about keeping a daily log of things that you appreciate and noticing and being very specific. I appreciate mm -hmm. this and I appreciate that. Or, and I love when this happens. That's my expression. I love when this happens or I love when that happens. Mm -hmm. I love, I love, I love. I like that too. Yes. <laughs> if you feel, so many people feel trapped that there's no way out and life's too fast and, you know, we're in a hurried multitasking world. I'm trapped in this. Yes. Uh, one day I'll be happy. One day I'll find a way. How do you, you can't just instantly change that. 
Well, it is a process around shifting the overall vibration. And it really starts with the words and the thoughts that you're using. So I promise, and I've made this promise to hundreds of thousands of people, if you eliminate the words don't, not, and no, and start talking about what you do want, that'll shift vibration. And people will start to see results right away. Don't, not, and no. Don't, not, First, and we no. have to do the test all day long. We have yes. to write down how many times we said I don't yes. and I'm not. But as soon as you do, there's a reset there. The, the question becomes, so what do I want? So, for example, for the parents, they might tell their kids, um, don't forget your homework. So what do they want? Remember your homework. You know, don't spill your milk. What do you want? Uh, drink your milk carefully. A business person to get up in the morning and said, oh, I don't want this to be a difficult day. I don't want my clients to cancel. I don't want this. I don't want them to be high maintenance. You know what Law of Attraction is doing? It's unfolding traffic patterns downtown. <laughs> so you attract the thing that you said you didn't want. Right. So the resetting of vibrations is simply the question, mm -hmm. so what do I want? Because when you go from what you don't want to what you do want, the words change. And when the words change, the vibration changes. And now Law of Attraction is responding to the new vibration. Okay, see what you've attracted, Dr. Michael Lyon, who's written this great book called Hunger Free Forever. And you were talking about dropping a little weight. Yes. See? Yes, well, I've attracted the lots of great things to my life that are in alignment to that, including, you know, a trainer and a personal chef and, and information about this and information about that. I mean, I just keep attracting lots of information. Mm -hmm. But before I changed my vibration, I was resistant to all that and, and couldn't attract anything that would help me. But if you bulked up to 300 pounds for whatever reason, would you beat yourself up about it? Probably. I would, probably wouldn't feel good about that. Because mm -hmm. it wouldn't be, in a, I wouldn't, you know, and it's really just about feeling good all the time. So it's like, you know, I would do something about it. W would you try to figure out why you attracted it? Uh, probably. Find out what, mm -hmm. what, what's the source, what's the cause of that. Yes. So applying the law of attraction to your life, uh, Thursday night, 5.30 to 9.30, there'll be people watching you. And the public yes. can come, right? Yes. The Sheraton Vancouver Wall Center. Yes. And people trying to learn about training. Yes. How to train from around the world will be watching you. That's right. So I have 100 people that are all over the world. They're going to be watching me mm -hmm. do a public seminar for Vancouver friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end, they're going to say, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to teach you how to do what I just did. So we're welcoming everyone to come out to the seminar at the Sheridan Wall Center on Thursday night. Okay. I thank you. Thank you very nice much. Nice to see you again. Thanks yes. for the swag. You're welcome. <laughs> Law of Attraction, Michael Lozier.